Possibly the best part about chaos engineering is its marketing. How can you not want to go to work and talk about chaos monkeys and simian armies and gremlins hiding in your data centers? The terminology may be as confusing as it is cute, but if you're a software tester like me, you may be surprised to find out that you already know more about it than you think. In this video, I'm going to talk about what chaos engineering is and what it has to do with software testing. What exactly does it mean to engineer chaos? Chaos engineering is the process of repeatedly and systematically introducing the system to extreme situations so that one, you know how it's going to behave in case that situation does occur, and two, you can figure out what you need to do so that it can respond better. The whole goal of chaos engineering is to build confidence about what the application can withstand. And this process generally involves four steps. First, you define and prepare the steady state. Before you do anything or change anything in the system, you watch it and see how it behaves to situations that naturally occur. Usually you would do this in production. Then you identify a hypothesis about how you think the application will behave. But in chaos engineering, instead of trying to prove the hypothesis, you are trying to disprove it. An example of a hypothesis is when one node shuts down, the application recovers and switches to another node within 10 minutes. It should be something that's very easily measured so you know whether it failed or passed. Next, you execute your chaos experiments. You start small, they call this starting with a small blast radius, and then you eventually work up to something bigger until you disprove the hypothesis. And lastly, you analyze the results. So the four steps are steady state, hypothesis, experiment, and results. But wait, doesn't that sound a little familiar? Now, I'm not talking about the scientific method, although you would be right for thinking that, but it sounds a lot like testing. We could say that testing has a four part process as well. First, we establish the baseline. We look at how the application behaves right now, and that'll help us identify any changes later. Next, we formalize our test objectives into requirements. Requirements are just another term for expectations. So we need to be clear on what we expect the application to do after the change and how the users are expected to be able to interact with them. Next, we run the test cases. Sounds a lot like the experiments. Last, we analyze the results. If you match these up one for one, it's not an exact comparison, but it's certainly in the same ballpark. But there are some differences. Chaos engineering and testing differ in terms of attitude. Testing seeks to verify something that it's already expecting. So if you're expecting that when you click a link, a dialog box pops up where you can log in, then that's what your tests are going to be looking for. In contrast, chaos engineering takes as a given that things are going to happen that we can't expect. So it's all about disproving the hypothesis and trying to recreate situations where the hypothesis would not hold true. You might be tempted to say that chaos engineering is more pessimistic, but I think it's more accurate to say that it's realistic because things happen in production that are difficult to predict. Chaos engineering is about preparing for those situations rather than sticking our heads in the sand and pretending that we can control and foresee everything that's going to happen. Chaos engineering and testing also have different purposes. If you think about it in terms of the Star Trek universe, testing is a bit like Starfleet. They have missions, they plan out carefully what is required to get that mission, they carry out the mission, and then they report the results. Chaos engineering is more like the Maquis. They are a guerrilla paramilitary organization. They don't really know what's going to happen. They can't really have a mission because they are responding to other forces that are beyond their control. What they are very good at is improvisation and being resilient enough to withstand attacks, regardless of where or from whom those attacks may come. Chaos engineering and testing still do have their similarities. We've already seen that their processes are pretty similar and they have the same general intention, which is to improve system quality. It's also interesting to note that the two seemingly disparate disciplines also converge on the same mindset that is required in someone who might be good at running chaos experiments or running tests. 
They both require someone who has multidisciplinary skills, someone who is technical, as well as someone who can talk to different parts of the business or developer teams, someone who can understand what it's like to be an end user and have the empathy to meet people where they are and advocate for those people's needs. It has to be someone with a healthy dose of intellectual skepticism who is willing to respectfully question beliefs that the rest of the team may hold to be true. And it has to be someone with a great deal of curiosity. And if that sounds familiar to you, then maybe you'll agree with me that the natural temperament of a tester makes us perfectly suited to doing chaos experiments as well. And that's why, despite how different chaos engineering and testing are, I do think fundamentally chaos engineering is a testing discipline. So if you're a tester, how do you get started with chaos testing? Well, it may be helpful to see this demo of how I ran a chaos experiment and a load test in the same script. And if you want to take a step back and take a refresher on what load testing is, that's this video. Thanks for watching and tschüss!